Hello guys, gals, and NBs. Welcome to another fun touch designer tutorial. Today we are once again looking at a simple custom particle system. If you've seen my other tutorials, you will recognize a lot of steps. But we will look at how to force this particle system into a spherical shape. For this tutorial, you will need my life component. We build that in this tutorial, but you can also find it on my Patreon, link in description, where you also get the pleasure of being one of the wonderful people who make these tutorials possible. You will also need the 2023 build of Touch Designer to follow this tutorial. It works without it. But it's worth downloading just to get that sweet, sweet bloom top. Anyways, let's get started. I'm going to start with a tube SOP. Let's turn the radius down to 0 0.1. Let's connect this to a sprinkle SOP. Let's also drop down a constant chop and let's call this channel count and set it to 1000. Drag this to the number of points and type in star, star 2, after the expression, to square it. We now have a million points. 1000 squared. A null. Sop to chop. A null. Chop to top. Red, green, blue. Fit to square. Thirty two bit float R, G, B, A. We now have those one million points represented as a texture. A 1000 by 1000 square of pixels. Is it making sense how this conversion is happening? A null, let's call it start. A feedback top. And a null, let's call it end. Drag that to the feedback. One more null that we call POS for positions. Let's render this, and add SOP, add points, a convert SOP, convert to particles per point, a geo, camera, points bright material, A render top. Set your desired resolution and pixel format. And a transform to create a background. Turn instancing on in the geo. And let's use the POS as translate operator. We have a tube. Let's drop down our life component. And put that over the position loop.
Let's use a keyboard in to reset the life component and feedback top. Real simple. Let's use a noise top. Plug the over into both inputs. Offset 0. Amplitude 1. Monochrome off. Under output, set it to just noise. Connect it to math. Multiple the signal by 0.001. Let's add this to the loop. Let's turn the alpha down a little in the material. Now this is pretty. Let me show you something fun. In the new TD build, they've added this feature. If you turn the noise to monochrome and go to output, you can calculate the derivative of the noise. And it looks so good. Let's translate it. If you have my Life Component 2.0, from the Low Fields tutorial or Patreon, we can use this Life Gradient to color the particles. Select it, and connect it to a null. And let's use those colors. Let's add some sweet, sweet bloom. With a point transform in the feedback loop, we can create some simple movements. Like rotation. And with a threshold in the seconds input, we can mask which pixels we want to be affected. And if we add a math after and change the to range to negative 1 to 1, we can create contrary motion. The slope can be a little intense, so let's turn this amplitude down. Just making some changes to the color. I've started using a level top to add colors to particles. Using the R, G, B, a tab. I think it's kinda nice. Okay. Let's shape this into a sphere. We are not actually going to make a spherical bounding box, 
We are going to project these particles to the surface of a sphere. We are going to do that by normalizing all of these values. We can do that by calculating the length. That means that we are measuring the distance each particle has from zero. Let's do that with a math top. Mask the alpha, and combine channels, with length. This texture needs to be 32-bit float monochrome. So we just have one channel. And then we use a composite top to divide the position by the length. We need to go to transform and set the fixed layer to input one, so it doesn't turn monochrome, set it to divide. And now it's a sphere. We can use this multiple to change the shape. This seems a little like magic. But we have combined the red, green, and blue values to measure the length away from zero. We then divide the position by their length. A number divided by itself is equal to 1. And therefore the vector's length is now equal to 1. So everything is positioned 1 away from zero. Therefore, it is arranged like a sphere. Okay, I don't know exactly how it works. I know that it works. I was watching the Recursive Displace tutorial by Pakita12 and saw him demonstrating this in 2D and I thought, that should work in 3D. And I tried it. So here we have this sphere. And we can play around with it. But here is a neat thing. If you go into this math and play around with the post ad, some really pretty shapes appear. It looks like an exploding star. You can play around in this math. Like turning off the blue channel, and then we get this kind of effect. And as always, mess around with the noise values. This is nice, right? Add an LFO. Have fun. That's it for today. Cheers.